21 minutes to 11 is the time. Now, is our reliance on technology doing us more harm than good? Social commentator Mal Fletcher thinks that potentially this is the case, and uh, he's on the line to me now. Mal, good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. What's the worry, then? Well, first of all, I'm not advocating we sort of have a luddest approach, we try to turn back the clock, we can't do that and why would we want to? But I think we do need to think more carefully about how much of our thinking and communication we give over to you know, digital devices. If you think about it, none of us do basic sums anymore. We've given over arithmetic to machines. We've given over spelling to predictive text. We've given over navigation to the TomTom. -tom. And much of our communication now is via digital devices. And human communication, you know, it's filled with all sorts of complex activities like the reading of subtle body language or biometric signs. The question I'm asking is, what happens to the parts of the brain responsible for all those complex activities if we use them less and less? Yeah, I was in a shop the other day and the till packed up. It was electronic till, you know, and uh, the, the shop assistant needed to calculate my change. It wasn't a difficult sum to do, but she couldn't do it. Yeah, well, and I probably would be like her. I'd be saying, you know, goodness me, what's... You go into a restaurant and try to give a tip and you've got to work out the percentage. And if it's not 10%, it's a little more, more tricky for us. And, you know, there's been a lot of studies that are sort of suggesting that we might end up with something that I call digital dementia, which is where the, the symptoms of what we now call dementia, things like shorter attention span, mental confusion, um, forgetfulness, feelings of isolation, you know, they might actually occur in, in normal brains simply because we're giving over so many areas of activity to external devices. But the argument is, well, that it frees up our brain to, to, to work on more important things, and, and that is the advantage. Yeah, well, I would probably uh, uh, counter that with a study recently in California. The University of California conducts experiments into how rest helps the brain to learn and develop memory. It says that downtime lets the brain go over our experiences, interpret them, and then develop them into long-term memory. If the brain, they say, is constantly stimulated through things like digital devices, for example, we're actually robbing our brains of the chance to add value to all the data that's coming in. So we've got this constant flow of data, almost data overload now, but not as much time, they're saying, to reflect on that. And I, I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. Yeah, but if the technology's there, uh, and we can use a calculator now to, to add up, and uh, we can use a spell checker on the computer to spell. Why is it important to, to still be able to do these things manually? Well, again, I'm not advocating that we don't use it. I've got a tablet sitting in front of me here. I really love technology, but you know, the brain is an amazingly plastic mechanism. It does adapt to the technologies we use, but it's the speed at which change is occurring today that makes it harder for us to adjust well, I think, to identify the best parts of a technology and reject the worst. And that's an important part of being a human being. For example, you know, we can use things like Skype to communicate with people on the other side of the world. It's a great thing, great technology. Uh, but who can say that doing that is as good as sitting across the table from somebody having a face-to-face -face conversation. One will facilitate the other, but one will not replace the other. Right. I've got somebody on the other line here, Malu. Uh, well, let's see what he says. It's Gary Stonehouse, who is a, a computer expert and owner of a computer shop in Mask. Gary, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, what would he say then to, to Mal? Has he got a point? Um, in some uh, ways he has a point, but I don't necessarily agree. I think the digital devices that we have around us help us achieve more and help us do lots of things that we could never have done before and we could never do without them. And I don't think that we're relying on them too much um, because of the advantages that they give us. People are still able to function properly um, without the digital devices. Uh, the example that you gave earlier about the uh, uh, going into the shop and the till not working and having to calculate the change, I'm sure that uh, the girl on the till managed to calculate the change uh, in the end. It just took a, a longer time to do that because she wasn't used to it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not sure she knew where to start, actually. <laughs> oh, right. She, <laughs> well, she, she got very flustered. <laughs> OK. Maybe I'm making a presumption there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what about... Let, let me give you another example, Gary. Um, I, I uh, got a satna for Christmas. I know okay. I'm late to the party on that, I know. However, it is one of the world's greatest inventions, there's no doubt about that. But, you know, my worry is now that I just switch my brain off and I just listen to the woman's voice. Uh, I, in future, I will no longer be able to work out how to get from A to B. 